Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be talking about the classification of amino acids. Amino acids form the building blocks of proteins. The basic structure of an amino acid consists of a central alpha carbon which is connected to an amino group, carboxyl group, hydrogen and a variable R group. In certain amino acids, the amino group is joined to the carbon atom which is not the alpha carbon atom. For example, in beta alanine structure, the amino group is attached to the beta carbon. Such amino acids are called as non-alpha amino acids. Most amino acids in the body are alpha amino acids. Non-alpha amino acids include beta alanine, beta amino isobutyrate and gamma amino butyrate. Beta alanine is a very important um, amino acid which is formed from cytosine and uracil. It is seen in pantothenic acid, coenzyme A, acyl carrier protein and beta alanyl dipeptides. There are two beta alanyl dipeptides formed by joining histidine and beta alanine. The first one being carnosine and methylated carnosine which is called as anserine. There is another dipeptide called homocarnosine. The name is very similar to carnosine but it does not contain beta alanine. Instead of beta alanine, it contains GABA. Please remember that all three of these contain histidine. Carnosine and anserine are important in skeletal muscle function. Coming on to the classification of amino acids, they can be classified on four main characteristics based on the variable R group, based on the polarity, based on nutritional requirement and based on metabolic state. Based on the variable R group, we can classify them as aliphatic, aromatic and amino acid based on polarity they may be polar or non-polar based on nutritional requirements they can be essential or non-essential or they may be semi-essential Essential amino acids are those which cannot be produced by the body and hence we need to obtain them through dietary sources. Whereas non-essential amino acids are those which are synthesized within the body. Examples of essential amino acids are methionine, threonine, tryptophan, valine, isoleucine, leucine, phenylalanine, lysine and histidine. There is a very simple mnemonic to remember the essential amino acids. It is called met, will, fly. The spelling becomes met, will, fly. So it is methionine, threonine, tryptophan, valine, isoleucine, leucine, phenylalanine and lysine. Some authors consider histidine to be a semi-essential amino acid whereas others consider it to be an essential amino acid. Based on metabolic fate, they can be ketogenic, glucogenic, or both. Now, coming on to the first classification that is based on variable R group. I said we can classify them into aliphatic, aromatic, and amino acid. The aliphatic 
amino acids can further be classified as simple amino acids branched chain amino acids hydroxyl group containing amino acids sulfur containing amino acids acetic amino acids and their amines and basic amino acids Simple amino acids are glycine and alanine. The R group of glycine is hydrogen and it is optically inactive. It is the simplest amino acid. Valine, leucine and isoleucine are branched chain amino acids. Hydroxyl group containing amino acids are serine and threonine. Tyrosine is also a hydroxyl group containing amino acid, but since it is an aromatic amino acid, we'll talk about it there. Sulfur containing amino acids are cysteine and methionine. If you look at the structure of cysteine, the structure is very, very similar to serine. The only difference is that instead of OH, Cysteine has SH. This SH is called as the thiol group. So this is because the entire carbon skeleton of cysteine is formed by serine. And the sulfur atom in cysteine comes from methionine. So by this we can just remember that serine and methionine are required for synthesis of cysteine. In contrast to the SH group or thiol group present in cysteine, in methionine we see a sulfur which is sandwiched between two carbon atoms. This is called as the thioether linkage. Acetic amino acids form their respective amines. Aspartic acid forms asparagine, as glutamic acid forms glutamine. The only difference is that acids have the COOH group, whereas amines have the CONH2 group. Alkaline amino acids are arginine, which is the most polar amino acid. It contains the guanidinium group. That is why for arginine, because of the presence of guanidinium group, it is specific reaction is Sakaguchi reaction. Lysine is another alkaline amino acid, which is very important for synthesis of carnitine. Histidine contains the imidazole ring. The pKa of histidine due to the presence of imidazole ring is very similar to the normal physiologic pH of the body which is why histidine has the maximum buffering capacity at physiologic pH. Because of presence of imidazole ring it is specific for polystest. Amino acid. Now this finishes the aliphatic amino acids. Coming on to aromatic amino acids. There are three aromatic amino acids that is tyrosine, phenylalanine and tryptophan. Now if we look at all of them, they all contain a benzene ring. And if you look at the name alanine and then phenylalanine, this is because the R group in alanine which is formed by methyl group if we attach a benzene ring to it, it becomes phenylalanine. And if to this benzene ring, we attach an OH or a hydroxyl group, 
it becomes tyrosine or i can say alternately that if we add a phenol group to alanine it becomes tyrosine and if we add a benzene it becomes phenylalanine all benzene containing benzene ring containing amino acids are positive for xanthoprotic reaction because of the presence of phenol group tyrosine is positive for millens reaction and fallen cock to reaction tryptophan contains the indole ring which is why it is specific reaction is hopkins gold reaction because of the presence of indole ring so just revising all the important special groups which we talked about in arginine we have the guanidinium group in phenylalanine we have the benzene ring in tyrosine we have phenol histidine has the five membered imidazole ring which gives it the maximum buffering capacity and physiologic ph proline has the pyrrolidine ring here proline is an amino acid If you look at the amino group it is part of the pyrrolidine ring this is the only amino acid in this whole diagram or table where we see a secondary amino group which is part of the ring methionine has a thioether linkage whereas cysteine has a thiol group in tryptophan we see the indole ring which is why it is positive for hopkins gold reaction classification of amino acids based on polarity so they can be polar amino acids and they may be non polar amino acids all charged amino acids are polar what are the charged amino acids acetic and basic amino acids are charged the simple mnemonic abc acetic and basic amino acids are charged uncharged amino acids which are also polar are those that contain hydroxyl group that is cyanine and threonine and sulfur containing amino acids with thiol group that is cysteine the amines of the acetic amino acids are also polar amino acids glycine is the simplest amino acid and is also a polar amino acid non polar amino acids are alanine methionine all aromatic amino acids branched chain amino acids and amino acids are non polar histidine is an aromatic amino acid but it is also a basic amino acid and hence it is polar based on metabolic fate they can be ketogenic glucogenic or both ketogenic and glucogenic Leucine is the only purely ketogenic amino acid. It is a branched chain amino acid. Those amino acids which are both ketogenic and glucogenic are phenylalanine, isoleucine, tyrosine, tryptophan. Lysine by many authors is considered to be ketogenic. But it may but it is actually both ketogenic and glucogenic. All the remaining amino acids are glucogenic. there are over 300 amino acids in nature but all the proteins for uh, present in the human body are formed from just 20 amino acids so in the human body we actually have only 20 amino acids but recently we have discovered a 21st amino acid and a 22nd amino acid the 21st amino acid is selenocysteine as you can see by the name cysteine so in the structure of selenocysteine instead of the thiol group the sulfur is replaced by selenium the precursor amino acid of selenocysteine is serine and this amino acid is coded by a stop codon uga by a process called recoding co translational modification occurs in this 
in the synthesis of selenocysteine occurs co-translationally. For this, second element in mRNA is required. The 22nd amino acid is pyrolysine. It is also coded for by a stop codon UAG helped by the pylus element in mRNA. Selenocysteine forms the active site of various enzymes, especially reductases and peroxidases. It is also forming the active site for idothyronine deadenase and selenic protein P. Derived amino acids are those which undergo post-translational modification. They may be classified as those which form proteins and those which do not form proteins. Those which form proteins include 4 hydroxyproline and 5 hydroxylysine. Proline, remember, is an amino acid with a pyrrolidine ring, and lysine is a basic amino acid. So for hydroxylation of these amino acids, vitamin C is required and the hydroxylated forms are found in collagen. Methyl lysine is found in myosin in the muscle. Gamma carboxyglutamate is a very important component of clotting factors. For gamma carboxylation, vitamin K is required. Cysteine. Cysteine is formed when two cysteines join together to form a strong disulfide bond. This is seen in insulin and immunoglobulins. Desmosine is found in elastin. Those amino acids which do not form proteins are ornithine, arginosuccinate and citrulline. They take part in the urea cycle which we will talk about in urea biosynthesis which is an important component of amino acid metabolism. Homocysteine is derived from methionine. Homocysteine is a product of cysteine biosynthesis. And glutamate gamma semialdehyde is a serine catabolite. Amino acids form certain special products which perform important functions in the human body. For example, Tyrosine is required for the synthesis of thyroid hormones, melanin and catecholamines. Tryptophan is required for synthesis of serotonin and niacin, which is required for synthesis of NAD and NADP. Arginine helps in nitric oxide synthesis, whereas glutamate on decarboxylation forms GABA, which is an important neurotransmitter in the body. Histidine forms histamine by a similar process. Cysteine, which itself is synthesized by methionine and serine, forms taurine, which is important for bile acid synthesis. So this ends the introduction to amino acids. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one.